Hello again. It is often assumed that free markets are a very efficient way of allocating resources in an economy, but this isn't always the case. If you're new to the channel, my name is Ollie. This is Economics Unlocked, and today we take a look at when free markets fail. So, what exactly is a free market? Well, it's a system of determining how much of each product society should produce. Take the example of bread. There is no one person who decides how much bread is produced each day. Instead, individual bakeries decide how much bread to produce, and individual people decide how much bread they want to buy. And companies will try to match the demand of consumers. Bakeries don't want to produce too much bread, or they'll make a loss, and they don't want to produce too little, or they'll miss out on profits. A company can sell the right amount of bread either by changing the price they charge for their bread. Since if the price is lower, more people will buy it, or by changing the quantity of bread they produce each day. As the decisions of individual buyers and sellers are aggregated together, the free market system determines the total amount of bread produced each day and the price charged for the bread. And so you see that there is no one person in charge of producing bread. Yet both the correct price and quantity of bread in the country is determined automatically. It is efficient because it essentially is a team effort between buyers and sellers. The sellers have to pay all the costs of the flour and so on, and they will pass these costs on to the buyers in the price. While the buyers will enjoy all the benefits of eating the bread, and they will consider these benefits when deciding how much they are willing to pay for the bread. Because of this, the price of a product is often described as a signal, because the price signals to buyers how costly it is to make bread. And it signals to the sellers how valuable bread is to people, and so not only is there a market price for bread, but crucially there is a market quantity too. The free market has determined automatically the socially optimal amount of bread to produce each day. So in normal times, there is never an excess of bread, nor is there ever a shortage, because the free market communicates what buyers and sellers want, and the optimal quantity is determined. This system seems very neat. So, what exactly could go wrong with this free market system? Well, the issue is that while individuals will take into account the costs and benefits to themselves, they won't necessarily take into account the effects on others. For example, a person buying a cigarette does not have to worry about secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke isn't a problem for either the producers of cigarettes or the buyers, so it's not something they take into account when deciding how much to consume or produce. None of these third-party costs are taken into account when the price of a cigarette is determined. So the market price will be too low, and people will buy too many cigarettes. You see, the free market system might be great when there are no third parties involved, but in many markets, the actions of buyers and sellers have big consequences for other people. These third-party effects are known as externalities, and they can be either positive or negative. Smoking may have many negative externalities, but education, for example, has many positive externalities. So, in a completely free market scenario for education, people wouldn't take into account these external effects, and not enough people would pay for education. The costs and benefits to the buyers and sellers are known as the private costs and the private benefits. If you add the externalities to these private costs and benefits, you get what's known as the social cost and the social benefits. Now, if you want the best outcome for society, you have to produce not at the market price and quantity, but at the socially optimal price and quantity by taking into account the third-party effects. To do this, you have to add the externalities into the market, so that buyers and sellers will take them into account when producing and consuming. A great way to do this is through taxes and subsidies. In a market where there are negative externalities, the government can add a tax to the item that is equal to the cost of the externality. Take taxes on smoking; they add in an extra cost for buyers and sellers to pay. With this method, you can make sure that buyers and sellers take into account the cost of the externality when producing and consuming. The same goes with subsidies. A government can subsidise things which have positive third-party effects. For example, in the UK, children's clothes are exempt from VAT or sales tax because they believe there are external benefits to reducing the cost of bringing up children. Now, some of the biggest external effects are effects on the environment. Producing CO2 or polluting a river costs nothing to the people doing it, 
so it's not a cost that anyone takes into account. In the UK, millions of homes are heated by gas and oil boilers. They are cheap to produce and install, and so people install them. It's not even like they're legacy technology, because thousands of brand new homes have conventional boilers installed. And when people's old systems need replacing, they turn to gas and oil powered systems. Why? Because for the buyers, they represent good value. There are plenty of renewable alternatives, but they cost more to make and to install. The problem is that the price of a gas boiler does not include the environmental cost of the carbon it produces. Nobody installing or producing gas boilers has to pay that cost when they buy a boiler. And yet, it is already costing all of us plenty of money. When droughts destroy crops and heat waves kill off livestock, your food bill goes up. When your government has to tackle bushfires or give aid to countries hit by storms, your tax bill goes up. And when your house is washed away by rising sea levels, you will be paying a massive cost. And you are only one in the 7 billion people who are paying similar costs for the changes we cause in our climate. So many people would say that the external costs of installing a gas boiler are huge. Perhaps if these external costs were added to the price we pay for our gas and oil, it would be a no-brainer to install renewable alternatives, even though the private costs are higher for renewables. You see, if free markets are to be genuinely efficient, then individual buyers and sellers have to pay the full cost of their purchasing decisions. Well, that's it for this one, everyone. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button below and share us with friends and family. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.